Okay, so let, let's review what we know about enolates, and then we're going to come back and add a little twist to it. So, here's our good friend, acetone, dimethyl ketone. Again, this chemistry we're going to show doesn't just work with acetone, but we're going to show a simple structure. We can treat this with a base, and we'll simply use sodium hydroxide. And we have alpha hydrogens in acetone, and so our strong base can come in and pluck off a proton and form our enolate. And the enolate is simply a carbanion next to a carbonyl. We get H2O. Uh, H2O has a pKa of about 16. Ketones have a pKa around 20. And so this is the stronger acid. This is the weaker acid. And our equilibrium pretty strongly favors the left-hand side of the, the uh, equation. However, you know, it, you end up getting a ratio of about 10,000 to 1 as, as the ratio of um, ketone to enolate. As it turns out, even though you have one ten thousandth of your ketone deprotonated, that's enough concentration to often perform reactions. What kind of reaction can run with one ten thousandth deprotonation? Well, things like the aldol condensation, really common reaction. So one in ten thousand sounds terrible, but you know sometimes it's good enough, good enough to actually work pretty well. So as it turns out, treating a strong base, uh, a ketone with a strong base, it's really just the fact that you have a carbonyl attached to this uh, next door carbon, the alpha carbon, that makes it acidic. So we know other carbonyl functional groups. So, for example, here is an ester. We can treat this ester with a base. We'll talk about another video. Why I've just, sorry, the old phone is ringing, got distracted. Um, we can, uh, we'll react with a base, and we'll talk in another video why I've selected this particular base. Um, but this, here we have a carbonyl in our ester. And there's an alpha carbon to it, and there is a hydrogen. So this base can come in, deprotonate, and what will that form? Let will strike out some kind of acid-base equilibrium, and well, we will form an enolate. Now it's an ester enolate, but this is still an enolate. And uh, we could draw resonance for this enolate up into the carbonyl. Let's go ahead and do that. I was going to mess up our picture, but that's okay. So this is a delocalized charge. That's why it's a little bit more stable. We can see that exactly the same way in the top compound. And our side product is methanol. Methanol also has a pKa of about 16. What is the pKa of an ester? I know you were dying to ask that. It's about 25. So this is a weaker acid. In fact, it's quite a bit weaker acid than even a ketone. So actually now our ratio is about 10 to the ninth to 1. It's a billion to 1. Surprisingly, that amount of enolate formation is often still enough to do some useful chemistry. So as we change the carbonyl from a ketone to our ester, we get uh, we decrease the acidity of that alpha proton, but it's still good enough. So let's look at a, a couple more examples. So now we have alpha hydrogens not next to a ketone, but to a nitrile. Actually, this nitrile is able by resonance to stabilize the formation of a carbanion at that carbon if we treat it with a strong base. And the pKa is really not so different from an ester. pKa is around 25. And let's do one more. We've learned another carbonyl containing functional group, and that's an amide. And again, we have a carbonyl next to a carbon, so that makes gives us an alpha carbon next door. This alpha carbon is also has enhanced acidity to make an enolate. Now the pKa of an amide is about 30. And as it turns out, sodium hydroxide, sodium methoxide, the common weak bases we use for this simply aren't up for the challenge of trying to deprotonate at this alpha carbon. So we really need LDA to do this. 
And in fact, LDA is often used with esters and nitriles. Of course, we know it's often used with ketones as well, but you can't use some things like sodium hydroxide. So the one thing to be careful with is that we form these other enolates. They're completely fair game. They do form in reactions and we can do chemistry with them, but we need to be mindful that we are becoming less and less acidic. And that has some consequences on the reaction. We'll, we'll talk about those consequences.